Okay guys, welcome back. My name is Triplus as uh, usual and today in front of you you can see the Son of 4 channel R2 which is, um, well, it's not a Son of but uh, as you can see we have a bunch of uh, outputs here. So 4 outputs. Um, I already did the connection towards uh, the Son of uh, with all the cables. I tested it in the app, uh, so the, the st standard EWE link up. Um, seems to be working, but again, my goal is to, to put some of those more down here. Um, the good thing about this one actually is that when you open it up, you don't need to remove the cables, which I really love. Um, and yeah, okay, again, you will be needing your FTDI adapter uh, to, to flash something on there. Um, uh, by the way, if you are going to buy this and you walk out of the store with uh, four female and one male plugs, the shop uh, or the people at the shop may uh, give you a strange look, but uh, whatever, you will need it as you can see. Um, also, unfortunately, my leg is in a cast since uh, since a few days, as you can see, like uh, right here. Oh, almost my camera on the ground. Um, so moving for me is a little bit difficult. So let's jump immediately towards the actual. Uh, flashing part so I will be opening up the son of uh, which I can actually do right now okay we're loose um, and as you can see this board just comes right out um, and then uh, here if it wants to focus, you can see the VCC, the RX, the DX in the ground, which are the, the holes or the, the connections, I should say, uh, you will be needing for um, for flashing. So with your FTDI adapter, you just connect them. Um, yeah, and that's it basically. So once they are connected, um, you can just flash it using a no MCU flash, which I will be showing you when I'm on my desktop, so I'll be right back. Okay, so for this um, approach, I should say, we will be needing, uh, of course, a .bin file, which is a pre-compiled firmware, which you can find in uh, releases. And then depending on uh, which one you choose, yeah, okay. other uh, options are available, but the just son of .bin is the um, standard compiled one um, and then you have it in different languages minimal which contains just uh, less yeah features but the explanation is uh, is below so i have downloaded the uh, son of bin, dot bin uh, and then also node mcu flasher for which i download the win64 release um, so i have both on my computer um one thing i should say so in my previous video i did it with the whole um uh, platform IO approach, which and then changing some code, which according to some people was making things a lot more uh, difficult, I suppose, uh, or at least more complex, uh, knowing that Node MCU flash can go very quick through things. One thing I've noticed is that, uh, which I can actually show you, um, if I go to my uh, one of my Sonoffs, which is currently running. Um, as you can see, I have a static IP. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, router and my internet provider does not allow me to put internal static IPs without having to buy additional devices. So I'm doing it software side, but it's not possible to do it from here. I, I went through the things and for me, it's not possible to put a static IP. So that's one of the downsides I found, which is not configurable through the actual firmware. Um, so that's why I would use the the the, the long approach via platform IO or the Arduino ID. But let let's try it this way. Um, it's been a while since I did this, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. So um, I will be turning on my uh, phone to record this as well. Okay, so we should have started recording. Um, what I'm going to do, as far as I can tell. This button over here will be your um, your GPIO zero or the one that you need to ground um, 
to put the programming mode. So let's see, uh, I've connected my um, FTDI uh, adapter as well. So VCC is going to VCC grants to grant and RXDX. It's possible that on this model, they are wrongly uh, assigned. So let's see, pushing the button down, putting the cable in my USB port, if it's going to allow me. So it's not. Okay, there we go. And I'm not sure if a light is supposed to come on, but let's see if we found anything. So we have COM3. Let's find the firmware we downloaded. And. Uh, oh, I quickly have to. to Check for these uh, settings. Okay, let's see if uh, these are the correct settings. Um, okay, so I will doing a quick uh, voiceover here uh, because, well, there was a little bit confusion on my end while recording this. Um, so I actually, in the video, I flashed it twice. I will only be showing it once because the first time it's, well, I didn't change anything compared to the first time. What I think happened is that my, well, because there was no light on the, on the Sonoff to indicate anything, uh, I just tried again thinking nothing worked, but it did work. And I also did a quick check with platform IO to check for the serial output because I wasn't sure if it worked, but I'm um, assuming that you just do it for the first time. I will be jumping to the part where you could actually follow, um, which would allow you indeed to uh, well, to continue with the, the process as usual, because I, I lost a few minutes here uh, expecting it not to work, but it did work. So that's good. Okay, so uh, my son of is connected to the, the mains power right now. Uh, I follow these instructions here. So four short presses on the button, which we use to, to ground the device, which starts uh, a Wi-Fi manager. Then you connect to the son of network that you see on your phone or tablet or whatever. Uh, fill in your network details from your Wi-Fi. And then we're at this point. So then I needed, uh, of course, the IP, which because of this approach, I was unable to set statically. So either it's uh, connected to your router, checking which IP it, uh, it gave to the device, just testing IPs if you know your range, uh, using a network scanner, which I used uh, Fing. Um, and then I found that this was actually the device um, or the IP of my device. Uh, okay, this wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, so configure module uh, is the first thing we want to do. I have a son of four channel. Um, I'm assuming that the four channel is the same as the four channel pro, um, which I have. So I'm really hoping that is the case. I'm also hoping that the IP will stay the same uh, through restart. It should, but um, let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, it restarted. We indeed have the four switches. Okay, in the hallway, I hear all four of them uh, going on and off, so that's good. We indeed have power one, power two, power three, power four. That's good. Uh, what, what did it say here? MQTT. Okay, so let's connect to MQTT. Um, the first thing I actually want to do, uh, topic, let's call it dual aqua. Plus, I'm calling it plus because I also already have a dual aqua, which is the one running right now, and I want to replace this one. And my host is my Raspberry Pi. Or it should be fine. Uh, I don't have user and password on it, so it should be fine. Let's save this. Again, device will restart. So th the thing is right now, all the settings, if you watch my previous video, all the settings we're doing right now, we basically did via code. Um, previously, um, which also works. Uh, it's just, I guess, a matter of preference. And uh, there is a chance I will be refreshing this one um, with the platform IO because I really want my static IP, to be honest. 
Uh, but let's see what we can do. Maybe there's a, a comment I will ask in the uh, in the issues if it is possible. Um, okay, what else do we need? So Wi-Fi we have. We have our module. We have MQTT. Hopefully, the rest I don't really need. I think a friendly name. Uh, I do want to give it a friendly name. I'm also going to change the password to admin. Um, friendly name Drewel Aqua Plus. Uh, I don't need an emulator. I'm just going to try this. I'm honestly not sure what this is for, but uh, see save. Okay. Then the username will always be admin. Uh, so okay, we we'll start again. Um, I suppose we have to wait again. Okay, there we go. So normally in console now we should have this. Um, let me quickly try to configure it with the uh, home assistant. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I was able to add it to Home Assistant very easily by just copy pasting code that I already have. So these four uh, points here are the top four here. So as you can see, this is the uh, four, this is the uh, one, this is two, and this is three then. Uh, and in the hallway, I hear the uh, relays going on and off. So there's that as well. Um, basically, that's that's it. So, okay, guys. So before I stop, I actually want to mention one more thing. Uh, I did find a way to put a static IP address, which was the thing I was missing the most, which could potentially uh, switch my view on the Node MCU um, pleasure compared to the the other way. Um, I didn't know this was possible. I did some quick googling and actually found it. Um, so with these comments here, so over, over Wi-Fi, which is via the console, and I will show it, it is possible to change your, um, your IP address. So as stated here, one is for the IP address, two is for the gateway, three is for the subnet mask, and four is for the DNS server. Um, I did some quick uh, checks already. So via console, uh, you will see it. Um, these are the original ones, and I will be changing them. So. So there we go. Uh, some of them will remain the same, but I'm going to put them in anyway, just to ensure that everything is set and I don't run into issues. Um, and then we're going to restart the thing. Uh, and hopefully I should be able to reach it on uh, the 124. So let's see. And as you can see, I actually did it. So. It's not that hard. Uh, it was just uh, reading the comments a little bit. So it's possible to change much more via those comments, which is, is very good. I honestly never saw this before. So with this, now you know that um, it's possible to actually also change this. And I also know it because before I didn't. So I may, uh, may indeed change it for now. So that the Node MCU flasher indeed seems to be the easier way. So with this knowledge, I'll be leaving you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.